didn't see you come in. You must have come back to learn about inverse proportionality. Well, it's slightly different than direct proportionality, but with some of the same ideas. The basic idea of inverse proportionality is that when something gets bigger, something else gets smaller. And so, um, uh, of course, just like with direct proportionality, it's a mathematical concept, and so not just that basic idea, but that when one increases by a certain factor, like if it doubles, the other one will decrease by that same factor. A factor of two would mean it was cut in half, or divided by two. Uh, a general example of that is if you're uh, in a place where there not many people live, you can buy a lot of land cheaply. Fewer people, a lot of land. Or if you live in a place where there's a lot of people, like San Francisco or New York or LA, well, then you can't buy much land, at least not with the same amount of money. Uh, which brings up an important point. You always have to remember to keep everything else constant if you want to see the proportionality. Um, another example would be the car that we're in here. By the way, we're traveling through Utah now. Um, and uh, we're about 750 miles from home. And so if I'm going 75, which happens to be the speed limit here, that means it's going to take me 10, 10 hours to get home. Well, let's just say I really put the pedal to the metal and I doubled the speed, you know, traveling 150 miles an hour, well, that would cut the time to get home in half. It would only take five hours. When one gets multiplied by two, the other gets divided by two. Jericho in the back, he's one, he has a little bit of trouble with inverse proportionality, so you may hear him crying because he just doesn't quite get it yet. But hopefully you can pick up on it. And there's one more thing that I almost forgot to mention, and that is that uh, when you graph an inverse proportionality, you end up getting hyperbola. Because when one value is large, the other one's small. And then when the first value gets large, the second one gets small. So you end up with a hyperbola for a graph of that. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping in to learn about inverse proportionalities. Go ahead and take a gander at the scenery before we shut this off.